I mean, I have friends. I don't. I don't smoke marijuana. In fact, I can't be in a room with people who have their smoke. And in fact, I, I have a hard time even hearing people talk about it. Because I'm so sensitive. So, um, but that's me. Some people, there are people who use medical cannabis, medical marijuana, to help them with some psychiatric condition that's becoming more and more popular and recognized. That's them. I have friends who have been diagnosed with bipolar, and it, medic, uh, marijuana calms them down and helps them. Now, does that mean that they have cannabis deficiency disorder? <laughs> <laughs> no, because we know that's not how the cannabis works. It's a psychoactive, it makes changes, and the changes are experienced as positive. This is true of Abilify, Seroquel, Prozac, Xanax, um, Lithium, whatever psychiatric medication you want to talk about. Psychoactive changes in the brain experienced as helpful or not helpful by the individual. It's, it's really that simple. And so when we talk about recreational drugs, we talk about psychiatric drugs, we're really talking about psychoactive drugs and how they help people. Um, as Robert Whitaker mentioned, what they're not doing is correcting chemical imbalances that the illness is, is part of. Um, there has been a lot of belief in that, a lot of research about that, and has just not produced any proof that that's the case. Um, it is not responding to a genetic disorder that someone has, like sickle cell anemia or Down syndrome or something that's very specific. You can look at the gene under a microscope. That's not how it's working. If a medication is helpful to someone, it's because it has psychoactive effects that are experienced as helpful. They're not, it's not correcting chemical imbalances. In fact, because it's psychoactive, it's creating an imbalance in the brain. Very important for us to understand that because when people live under that assumption that, oh, I have a chemical imbalance, I need my medications, hey, the medications feel like they're helping me, oh, that proves that I have a chemical imbalance, you get locked into thinking and you don't even consider that coming off medication is a possibility because it seems like it, it defies what you know about the illness that you and of course, people, people get very defensive about this because and I, would, I, I get defensive too. But that's, that's the message that they told me. Hey, you gave me this message. It's actually not true. So what's up with that? So we need to be more honest about how medications work. And we need to be more honest about why they're experienced as helpful and why they're experienced as harmful. Because when you make those changes in the brain, which are often very serious changes, you create problems with side effects in the whole body. It can be very, very severe. Someone who takes a lot of alcohol is going to create all kinds of problems in their body. Someone who takes a lot of, of Abilify, takes a lot of, of Lyprexa, a lot of um, Prozac, may, not necessarily, but may also create very serious problems. And there is a list of some of the things that can happen, um, up to including death. I mean, some of these drugs, you have to get a blood draw because of the toxicity level. And if the toxicity is too high, you can get into a life threatening situation. I mean, I, I had a roommate once who was taking Lamictal and got one of those rashes, and her doctor didn't know about the rash. And fortunately, someone Googled Lamictal rash, and it was like exclamation points, get to the emergency room immediately. Wow. And um, so there are tremendous risks that are associated with these side effects that need to be understood and, and looked at. And um, we don't really under, understand that carefully enough, and one of the things that we also don't understand about the uh, coming off process is because drugs are making these changes in your brain, you will have, if you go off the drugs, you will have withdrawal effects, and they're often called discontinuation syndrome, which is a synonym for withdrawal, but basically it's the same as withdrawing from caffeine and getting a headache, withdrawing from sugar and getting you know, withdrawing from alcohol and getting an alcohol reaction to your, what's going to become a dependency. And it's not an addiction in the sense that you build up tolerance. It's not exactly the same as that. But it does mean that your, your brain and your body have adjusted to being on the medications. Okay? So one of the messages that we need to get across really loud and clear is that when people, you hear, you hear it said, so-and-so is off their meds, and they went into a crisis. And then, because that, that's true. That's true, people go off meds and they get into a crisis. Like, this has happened. And the message that we get, though, is that, oh, it's the underlying illness that's coming back. So it must be that they need their meds, right? But actually, if you go off caffeine and get a headache, it doesn't mean you have the underlying illness of, of caffeine deficiency disorder and you need to go back on your caffeine. It just means that your body, your brain, has become accustomed 
to having that psychoactive chemical. And when you withdraw it abruptly, you're going to get those big withdrawal effects. So the confusing thing is that the withdrawal effects for psychiatric medications look like what? They look like psychosis. They look like the illness. So now you see how we've got a setup for a very confusing situation. And in fact, one of the messages that I, you will take home today from this workshop is that generally speaking, going very slow is very important in coming off medications for the simple reason that it gives your time, brain and body time to adjust. And it depends on the medication, depends on the person. But generally speaking, slowly tapering is the approach, the protocol, and seeing how it goes. I've seen people who go really slow and have really big reactions to a very small dosage, so I don't want to make any kind of blanket statement. And I've also, there are situations, and this is, is, um, is unusual, but I'm going to mention it, when people are able to just go off abruptly. And everybody knows the story of somebody who miraculously quits cigarettes cold turkey. And it is possible, and there are actually situations where um, it may be medically necessary, because if you're in a life-threatening situation, my friend had that lamictal rash, had to come off lamictal, they didn't taper my friend off the nickel, they yanked her off the nickel. So um, there are situations when drug withdrawal, cold turkey, does work. I haven't seen it very much, but I don't want to rule it out because you will, you will run into people that that happens with. The general rule of thumb, everybody's experience is different. So the general rule of thumb is to go slowly and to taper, and it gives your brain the opportunity to slowly adjust. Um, so, uh, now, the other thing that I think is important to understand in this equation of harm reduction is that often doctors will say, professionals will say, well, God, yeah, you gained all this weight, you know, you're really having a really hard time, you've got all these kidney problems, you've got, you know, and it's terrible, yes, 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 you've got all these side effects, but isn't it so much better than mental illness? Isn't it so much better than psychosis? Isn't it so much better than what got you into the crisis in the first place? Okay? So, this is a really important thing to address. First of all, you are, you are not the same person now that you were when you went into that crisis the first time. Because everything is a learning process in life. So, now you have a different experience you're in a different place, so you may not be in the same place that you were when you went into that crisis. That's the one thing. The second thing is that as soon as someone says, I was with a, because I, I am now a therapist and I work with people, and I was in a hospital with a, a, a client who was struggling and was in the admissions process because she wanted to go into the hospital, and they asked her, you know, are you suicidal? Are you, uh, are you, um, uh, have you been, are you, uh, are you drunk? Are you hearing voices? Very common. The experience of hearing voices is so scary and overwhelming that we exaggerate it as a risk. So when a doctor says, well, you know, the side effects are so much better than the other thing that you could be going through, the psychosis and the crisis, hearing voices, well, the reality is that for many people, hearing voices is a terrifying experience. And yes, anything is going to be better than that. But Let's not exaggerate that because many people also learn ways of coping with and working with and living with their voices. Many people find ways of living with, coping with their suicidal uh, side that they have, the experience of, of, of suicidality that they have. Many people find ways of coping with and living with their tendencies to depression that are not medication. So this either, or either you're going to be in a crisis in your worst psychotic state or just take the medications and live with the side effects. That's a false equation. That's a false either or. There are many ways of working on addressing crisis without medication. That's an important part that we need to, um, to look at. And people here are familiar with the Wellness Recovery and Action Plan. It's a very RAP program, very important tool. There are so many different tools that we can use. And one of the, one tool that we can use, and I encourage all of us to learn about, is this issue of sleep. And I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned sleep before. Okay. I mentioned sleep before. You can learn to regulate your sleep without medication. You can learn to notice what your early morning signs are. You can 
if I get to sleep after 10, 30, 11, the next day I start, I start to feel like I'm sliding down. If I go the night without sleep, I start to really get into trouble. And so I learn what my early morning signs are. And this is a long-term process. This is about exploring. This is about studying myself, getting support. Um, so that's an important message. There are many, many ways that we can address our wellness and address the, the, the tendency that we might have to go into crisis, the possibility that we face of going into crisis. They don't necessarily mean that we have to be on medication. Now, the um, other thing I want to mention here, this is kind of a wild card, is the importance of the placebo effect. Because, you know, I mentioned that, you know, you take a psychoactive drug, it changes the brain chemistry, and then you have body changes, and then your consciousness interprets that and says, here's how I feel. I like that, I don't like that. I feel better, I don't feel better. Now that, that jump between what's happening in the body and the brain and then what we experience, what we think and feel, what our consciousness says, that's called the mind-body conundrum. That's the mind-body split. You can study biology, you can study chemistry, but they've never found where thinking is. They've never found where feeling is. They've never found where consciousness is. In fact, there's no established definition of consciousness. We can all agree that we're all awake and thinking and alive in this room, but science has no definition of it because there's there's been a huge debate and a mystery of how the mind arises from the body. There's no answer to that mystery. So that's why there's something called a placebo effect, which means that everybody is going to be really different in their experience of medication based on their expectations, based on deep health beliefs, maybe even unconscious beliefs about what the medication is going to, is going to do for them. It's very widely known and commonly understood in medicine that when a drug comes out and it's new, it's new, it works better. <laughs> Just because it's new. <laughs> okay? When the congressional hearings happened and the black box warnings came out on antidepressants and the word started to get out like, hey folks, this can sometimes make people suicidal, all across the world the effectiveness of those antidepressants went down a bit. Just because of the power of expectation, the power of mind. And I you know I cannot underestimate how powerful the placebo effect. I mean, there are there's something called placebo surgery. There are people who have had knee problems their whole lives, and um, nothing responds to the knee problem. And so they put them under anesthesia for a surgery, but all they do is make a cut, a surgical cut under the skin, and they don't touch the knee at all. Sew the person up. Come out of anesthesia and then now they don't have a new problem. <laughs> How is that possible? There's there are experiences where they will mix up the lab results and a patient will a patient who does not have cancer will get a lab result and say, hey, you have cancer. And guess what happens? The patient starts having symptoms of cancer and starts to slowly die from the cancer just from being told the incorrect lab results. And then they tell them, oh, we made a mistake. Let me give you the correct lab results. So her patient starts to get better once they the power of the mind kicks in and they realize, whoa, wait a second, they don't actually. This is well documented in um, scientific literature. Now, think of what happens when you go to a hospital and a very powerful medical professional says, you need to take these medications for the rest of your life. That's how it is. Very powerful placebo effect. Now, we live in a different world if the doctor said, well, Medications help some people. They don't help some people, and they got a lot of risks for a lot of people. Let's see if you want to try it and see what happens. It's a very different message. It's a very different message. So we do understand the power of the placebo effect, and that's not to say that I mean, the message should be you can get off medication because that's just not it's just not accurate. Some people are going to be better on medication, but the message should be you might be able to. It's worth exploring. Find out for yourself what works for you. It's a much more empowering message. It's a much more recovery oriented message. I can see your name. We'll get to questions in that. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. You're saying there's research now about how they can block the placebo effect and have an 